Hi and welcome back to the Peregrine Dame this time. I'm in Buenos Aires. I'm about to fall on my face. Hi, I'm Rachel Parsons and I travel alone. All over the world. In order to show you that traveling solo doesn't have to be so scary. And that traveling alone doesn't mean you're lonely. So don't wait for somebody to come with you. The world is not going to wait for you. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Be a peregrine day. Be a peregrine day. Since the Spanish landed here in the 1500s, Argentina has had a very complicated, very dark, sometimes bloody history. Today, Buenos Aires is a sprawling metropolis with European flavor, South American culture, and nearly three million people. But that's only the autonomous city. The Buenos Aires metropolitan area is home to nearly 13 million. As a teenager, I had a mild obsession with Eva Perón, and as an adult, I've studied Argentine tango for several years in my hometown of Los Angeles. So I've come to Buenos Aires alone, like usual, in order to put my finger on the pulse of one of the busiest cities I've ever seen. The most economical way that's still convenient to get into the mega-sized city from Aziza Airport is with the shuttle service run by Manuel Tien de Leon. The ride gives me time to ponder my wardrobe situation. I just got into Buenos Aires and it's colder here than it's supposed to be. I just came from the tropics, I just came from southern Mexico and Belize. And now I'm wondering if the jacket I brought is actually going to be uh, appropriate. I frequently make the wrong decisions, but not when it comes to my hotel choice in this case. Los Patios de Montserrat is not in a pretty street, but Brenda and Graham, the owners, are lovely people. The place is in a really good location as far as being able to get to everything. The subway is very nearby, the block away, the first stop, and uh, for the money, it's just, it's fantastic. It's fantastic for the money because I've chosen a room with a shared bath, which I don't mind doing. It means I'm paying about 40% less than if I had an ensuite, and it's in the heart of the city center. It's really cute. It's a great old building, beautiful real hardwood floors, fantastic courtyard, it's a little cold. The heater uh, for the size of this room is probably not really adequate, but I'm just going to have to suck it up and put on some layers. Uh, but it's, it's adorable, and it's a great price, so I can't really complain. Well, I'm still going to because it's a little cold, but... The owners give me a second heater and another blanket. After I unpack, I head for a short walkabout of the immediate neighborhood known as the Micro Center. I've been in some frenetic cities before in my life, but nothing that compares to this. Parts of, of Buenos Aires in the city center make Manhattan look like a village of a hundred people. This place is just teeming with energy. The Micro Center is also the seat of national government in Argentina. Argentina's congressional building is modeled loosely after the United States congressional building. Isn't that nice? Almost everything in Buenos Aires is covered in graffiti. Architecturally, it's such a, an interesting mishmash of a little of everything and, and every architectural style you can think of. But virtually everything is covered in some kind of spray paint, although some of it is politically motivated. I'm not sure why I think that makes it better. Buenos Aires is definitely my kind of town. I love big, moody, frenetic cities. It's sophisticated and it's cosmopolitan. Quite frankly, it is pretty dirty. There's spray paint covering just about every square inch of, of flat space or, or building space that's within arm's length. The raw grunginess gives central Buenos Aires an air of decaying grandeur. Having seen it, I head north into a swankier district to meet my first Argentine friend. I'm so excited. Palermo is an easy bus or subway ride north of the microcenter. The district is divided further into Palermo Soho and Palermo Hollywood on the north side where I meet Ezekiel. What's your favorite thing about Buenos Aires? If there's anything, if you just hate it, Maybe one of the things is the amount of people we can you can meet. Uh, I, I knew a lot of people and 
you have a lot of options to, to do, to things to do. I use couch surfing a lot and I still think it's just one of the best travel tools that has ever been invented. I mean, you know, since the, <laughs> since the advent of the guidebook, there hasn't been anything any better. And I met Ezekiel through Couchsurfing.com. It's actually .org. And he's such a sweetheart. So if you had to give advice to people coming through here, just by themselves. Uh, Good or bad. Things to do, things not to do. I usually say, uh, I'm, I would say that you can, uh, you can go to, to the, the same places everybody goes, just to, uh, to know it, to enjoy it. It's La Boca, it's uh, Puerto Madero, Tigre. Tigre is a really beautiful place. Be careful in some places on the, in the center of the city. It's some places at night that are really, bit, really dangerous. We finish our safe lunch and take a short stroll to the botanical garden nearby at Ezekiel's suggestion. You like Argentina as far as you have So been. far, yeah. It's my kind of place, but yeah, it's cool. People are cool. <laughs> you seem okay so far. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm a serial killer. Maybe. That's true, but I think we'll be okay if we stay in the park. <laughs> During the daylight. <laughs> Not going in at parks with you at night. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. What kind of serial killer loves plants and animals? So peaceful. So calm. The main streets in Palermo are just... The energy out there is dizzying, so it's nice to have a place to just stop. It's beautiful. The weather has gotten warm. Yay. Since yesterday it was freezing. The garden is frozen between the neighborhoods of Palermo and Recoleta. It's a beautiful respite from the hustle of the city. And Ezekiel is not a serial killer. When the Peregrine Dame returns, I get my geek on in a musical theater kind of way. Okay, I'm gonna try really hard not to just start singing songs from the musical Evita. I've come to Buenos Aires alone, and I've used Couchsurfing.org to connect already with one local, Ezekiel, with whom I had a lovely afternoon. You get to sit with somebody who's lived in a city for years, or who's been there all their life, and really share just a slice of their day. It, it changes, your, changes your mood, changes your outlook, uh, opens your eyes, and it gives the city, it gives the destination you're in a, a very personal face, literally. But nothing prepared me for the personal face I'm about to meet. Hey, hello. I am Jose Maria, and I need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the f***ing bar. This is the f***ing first bar. We don't know what I'm gonna do there. We don't know what we're doing next, but it involves a little of this, a little of that, and a touch of this. I drink your fast, I think. I think I need a beer. Jose, who I also met through couch surfing, has agreed to be my guide to the nightlife in Palermo. I drink more here than anywhere I've ever been. <laughs> With scores of bars and restaurants, it's easily Buenos Aires' favorite party district. Where are we now? What neighborhood? I don't know where we are. I'm not sure he's got much of a plan. We are in a bar in Palermo, Hollywood. They call it Palermo, Hollywood because we have some movies and TV studios over here. It's midnight. So midnight just means it's actually just starting, right? Yeah, it's the middle of the night. <laughs> but in, in Buenos Aires nighttime, nightlife kinds of terms, that means the very beginning? Yeah, it's the beginning. The, the party begins now. And you are invited. What if, what if I'm asleep? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you will sleep when you will die. <laughs> but I'm wide awake again very soon. Jose explains that these are locals gathering to practice for Buenos Aires Carnival in February. I can't go on, so I crawl back to my room. I really have to adjust to a city <laughs> that doesn't start hopping until midnight or later. Buenos Aires still has uh, kind of the feel and uh, the, the, the cultural norms of a European city. So 
if you're going out at night, people don't eat dinner before 9 o'clock, and they don't go out before 11, and they don't hit a nightclub until 2 a.m., and they, I mean, it's just, I dig it, I like it. I'm about to fall on my face. What stinks is my face has to be up again in a few hours because I agreed to meet Jose out in the suburbs. Feria de Mataderos in the neighborhood of Mataderos is one of the most authentic traditional markets you're going to find with less tourists than the ones in San Telmo or the city center. It'll take you about an hour from the center to get out by bus, but it's worth the ride. Do you end up coming out almost every weekend? No, no, but I, I, I come here, I think, uh, one time uh, at month, minimum. Yeah. Every Sunday, the suburb of Mataderos holds its market in the town plaza. Bands playing traditional Argentine music serenade the crowds all day, and plenty of people come in gaucho regalia to dance the afternoon away. Ah, uh, they, they are dancing chacarera. It's a very traditional dance. From the country? The, the birth of the folklore is uh, maybe in Santiago del Estero. Maybe Santiago del Estero, Mendoza, uh, Córdoba. I could spend the whole day just listening to the music and watching the dancers. My favorite spelling of cupcakes so far. But it's not the cupcakes I'm interested in eating. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. It doesn't have a name. Eat it, eat it at once. <laughs> it's a fruit stick. It's a, it's a fruit stick with popcorn stuck to it. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's candy. Those are, the strawberries are hard. I thought it was going to be goopy. I thought there was something. <laughs> Strawberries are candied on the outside, so it's really crunchy. After last night, I'm also really crunchy. So I call it a day because tomorrow, I have a date with a dead woman. I had a short-lived stint in professional theater when I was a teenager, and I ended up performing Navita, and that just whetted my appetite to find out more about Eva Peron. I became really fascinated with her, so to, to come to Recoleta, the cemetery where she's buried today, is, is actually kind of a thrill for me, and I'm not normally into uh, this kind of sightseeing, but uh, but this is kind of cool. <laughs> I won't pretend that I endorse everything that she and her husband Juan Peron did during his presidency because often they ruled with an iron fist. But there's still something about her that just grips me. I am the age now that she was when she passed away. I think what inspires me is that I know I haven't even accomplished a tenth of what she was able to in the short time she was alive. And I'm kind of geeky about this. <laughs> I've been reading about the Casa Rosada since I was a teenager uh, in relation to Eva Perón and Juan Perón his presidency, so you're going to have to excuse me for a few minutes if I just turn into a, a major geek. I'm gonna try really, really hard, really hard, not to just start singing songs from the musical Evita, because that's what I really want to do right now. <laughs> but I'm gonna spare all of you because it's I'm, I'm an awful singer. Don't cry for me, Arjun. All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. Just my imagination gets so wrapped up with this persona. You know, I think honestly, part of it has to do with the fact that she was so driven and so ambitious. And those are things that I really admire in people. Now, I don't always admire the results of it. And some of the things she and her husband did while he was in office were not to be admired, for sure. And I don't want anybody thinking that, uh, that I agree with all of it. But there's just something about it. I may not be surrounded by thousands of descamisados around here, but I'm surrounded by a dozen school kids. It's a good mark of this country's progress, but the plaza in front of the Casa Rosada is far from out of use. Plaza de Mayo is the political heart of the city for demonstrators and activists. Argentines still take to the streets fiercely when they sense the need for change. I film this abortion rights rally with my phone while I'm out getting a bite of dinner without my camera. Even in the case of rape, a woman has to ask the government here for permission to have an abortion. Often, she is denied. 
I spent the day nerding out on Eva Perón, Argentina's most famous first lady. Now I get to spend the evening feeding my other Argentine obsession. I've studied traditional Argentine tango in Los Angeles for several years now. So you can bet I was not going to come to the birthplace of tango and not spend at least one night taking lessons and dancing my three-inch heels off. Tonight I've come to La Catedral in Almagro to take classes with Frederico. The Catedral is not the fanciest tango club you could go to. It's in an average part of town. It's not much to look at. But the dancers are very good. Federico Prado is a fantastic instructor. He owns the place. And I was just very lucky that his teaching partner didn't show up because then he got to uh, demonstrate with me. Well, <laughs> that's wrong. I got to demonstrate with him, which was pretty, pretty special. And I was a little bit nervous, <laughs> but I think it worked out. Tango developed out of dances brought over by European immigrants who lived in the port districts in Buenos Aires, or porteños. There are clubs all over the city, and most offer inexpensive classes at the beginning of the evening. I'm also meeting my third couch surfing buddy, Natalia, here. My new friend. We hit it off splendidly, and one of my dancing partners, Sharuk, and his friend join us. One of the whole reasons I wanted to film in Buenos Aires was to be able to go dancing, and I was not disappointed. The guy broke my tripod. <laughs> I mean, Federico was very nice and offered a friend of his to help me film, which was fantastic, but... Oh, fucking hey, it's, it's an expensive tripod, and now it's in four pieces. But Natty's also hosting me in her home for the remainder of my stay in Buenos Aires. And her father is my hero for putting it back together. The next morning, she introduces me to another Argentine tradition. We are going to drink mate. It's a very common drink here in Argentina. All families <laughs> drink it uh, every, every time. Now you are going to, to try. Natty's father does the honors. Slowly because it's hot. Okay. <laughs> There's a very specific ritual to drinking the mate. Each person in turn drinks a full cup, and no touching the straw. Am I supposed to drink the whole thing? Yeah, but if you don't want to drink the whole thing, it's you okay. Can. It just might take me a minute. It's like, <laughs> the, the metal straw gets warm, my lips get warm. <laughs> My lips survive, and Natalia takes us to San Telmo, a neighborhood to the southeast of the microcenter. San Telmo is one of Buenos Aires' oldest neighborhoods. It survived everything from street fighting in the run-up to Argentine independence from Spain to yellow fever in the late 1800s. Today, it's one of the antiques capitals of the city. You can find art, you can find antiques, you can find clothing, and tons of bars and restaurants. So it's worth spending an afternoon kicking around down here. We're not just kicking around, though. Natty's on a mission. She keeps insisting I eat this stuff called dulce de leche. Natalia is one of the sweetest, kindest, most enthusiastic people I've ever met. Natty's been talking about a specific Argentine sweet all day. So we find a cafe that specializes in it in Plaza de Rego. I try some dulce de leche on its own first. So, what do you think? Great, right? Amazing, yeah. <laughs> it has the consistency of caramel, but not the flavor. Was this one yours? I'm gonna eat both of them. We are going to eat an alfajor, which is a very common candy here in Argentina. It has dulce leche inside. So we have a white chocolate and a chocolate chocolate. Super sweet. Super sweet. <laughs> It's good. I thought it was going to be a hard cookie to outside, but it's not. It's um, it's cake. Yeah. This has nuts inside. I almost like this one better because of the, the nut flavor inside. Yeah. If the inside of this was covered in the dark chocolate, I would like that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we've had dessert, it's time for dinner. People give me a hard time sometimes because I come to regions of the world that are known for their cuisine and then I eat something completely different. And tonight is one of those nights. I've been invited to Tandoor, an Indian restaurant in the heart of the neighborhood called Recoleta. Remember Sharuk, one of my tango partners? He's co-owner of Tandoor and he's invited us, along with two more of Natty's friends, to have dinner at the restaurant. It's some of the best Indian food I've had outside of India. Every dish is scrumptious and the company is wonderful. I'm really hesitant to leave Buenos Aires because it's just, it's, it's my kind of city. And since all roads in Buenos Aires lead to Palermo, we're spending our last night there. For my last night in Buenos Aires, I have my new bestest friend, Nafi, and my new newest friend, Gaston. And we have met at bar 878, which has no sign and one security guard outside. But it's very cool. But it's very cool. We have had a lot of whiskey. But the buzz can't last forever. Everyone I've met from Natalia to Sharuk to Jose to Gaston to Ezekiel have been such cool people, such, such kind, uh, warm people that it's, um, it's really endeared the place to me. And, uh, I've had a great time and I wish I could stay longer, <laughs> a lot longer. And that's the sign of a successful solo trip. See extra scenes and outtakes? Head on over to theperegrinedame.com.